Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com and today we're going to be repairing this ARP Pro DGX which is the earlier Pro DGX and so it's very similar to the Pro Soloist, it uses the same filter as the Pro Soloist. Looks pretty much the same as the Pro Soloist, the only difference is it has the push button, push button switches instead of the uh, toggle switches. So uh, a customer of mine uh, bought this uh, from, from someone on, uh, online and it came and it was completely dead so he sent it to me to uh, to take a look at it and uh, I opened it up already and there was just a cable disconnected inside and uh, that that brought it kinda to life um, there are a few issues with it that I've noticed um, number one the uh, the volume it uh, cuts out in the top Quarter in the top quarter of the slider, you can hear something. It's very scratchy, and then once you get below a quarter, there's no volume at all. So the taper is wrong. It's only uh, operating in this top quarter, and it's uh, very dirty. It needs to be uh, replaced. Um, so we're going to be replacing the uh, the sliders with the LED sliders. Um, uh, kit that I that I have so they're gonna be very very bright uh, very bright blue LED sliders when we're done uh, the other thing that I noticed I mean that the touch sensor is working fine uh, the voices sound reasonably correct uh, one thing that I noticed was some of the voices like here buzz bassoon that never releases all the way, or is, is really inconsistent with the release. So I'll... You can hear that it just, uh, the note continues um, indefinitely, and it, you know, it, sometimes it gets a little louder and then a little softer, uh, but it should be releasing all the way. And this only happens on some of the voices, so here's bassoon, and bassoon is, is silent. After you release, um, yeah, the touch sensor works fine. The filter seems to be working good. The voices sound um, reasonably close to what they should sound like. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the the sliders. And then I'm going to recap the power supply since the power supply is still original. We're not going to do a full overhaul of this keyboard, uh, but we're going to uh, do the power supply first and the sliders, and then we're going to see where we stand with this with this uh, note not releasing issue. And maybe we'll have to track down something on the envelope generator board. So with that, we'll get started. I'm going to start with a recap of the power supply and the first thing that I did was I unplugged the keyboard and now I'm going to vacuum out some of the crud that's, uh, that's there. And I'm going to disconnect the power wires so I've got the uh, the hot here. I've got the connection to the switch next. They're just quick connect terminals so I can just wiggle them off. And then I've got the uh, the neutral pull off with the pliers. I'm going to come around back and uh, unscrew these. I'll come around this way.
Okay, I got the power supply out. So now I'm all set to remove the uh, old parts from the power supply. And uh, we'll start by just snipping them off on the uh, component side of the board. Uh, this way we have to use way less heat to, uh, to desolder what's left. And the, uh, the tantalums I can't really, can't really get to, oh, they, these, I can get to them. There we go. So, old components are snipped off. And it's time to desolder the remaining leaves. Now I'm going to clean the board of its uh, old flux residue. Pretty nasty. I'm going to place the components. And now we're uh, we're ready to solder these. We'll zip tie the uh, capacitors. And then one final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the old thermal compound off. So uh, I'm going to use a, uh, a dirty rag and some alcohol. It could be a clean rag too. Now I'm ready to put the uh, power supply back in the keyboard so I'm going to apply some new thermal compound to the heat sink a little bit um, and then I am going to install it just like I removed it.
So now I've got the power supply reinstalled, uh, but I haven't connected it to the rest of the keyboard yet. And that's because I want to verify the voltages and get it semi-dialed in before I, uh, before I hook it up to anything. So now at this point, it's going to be okay to plug in the keyboard again. And I'll go ahead and turn it on. And I'm going to measure the voltages for the different rails of the power supply and uh, adjust them as best as possible. So this one is the ground. So I'm going to stuff this, uh, this lead in here on the black wire. And the uh, first one I'm going to look at is the, uh, the negative, or sorry, the, I'm going to go to the positive 15 volt rail first. Uh, so we're at 15.23. So I should dial this down a little bit before I stick it in the keyboard. So I'm just reaching in and turning the trimmer with my finger. And I've got it down to 15.00. Now with the plus 15 adjusted, I'm going to move the lead over to the minus 15 connector. I'm at negative 14.64, so I'm going to adjust that up, or rather down, to uh, negative 15 volts on the nose. This is just a uh, rough calibration when I connect it to the load of the keyboard. I'd expect the voltages to change, but they'll only go lower or closer to, to zero. Um, so the next thing I'm going to verify is the plus 5 volt rail. There's nothing I can adjust there, but this one's at 5.273 volts, which should be fine. So now I'll go ahead and I'll turn the keyboard off, and uh, we'll, we'll connect power again. Now I'll turn the power on and we'll recalibrate the power supply again. So I'm going to start with the, uh, the plus 15 volts. up to 15. Again, the only reason I turned it down just was not to expose anything to over voltage. So now I'm going to measure the uh, minus 15. We're looking at minus 15.37. So we're okay, bringing that back up to 15. Minus 15 on the nose. Now let's take a look again at the 5 volt rail. And now with a load attached to it, it's gone to 4.85 volts, which is still fine. So our power supply has been rebuilt and calibrated in the synthesizer. And uh, we're ready to move forward with the next repair, which is changing out the sliders. So now we're going to install the LED sliders. And to do that, we're going to remove this board A. And uh, on the early Pro DGXs and, uh, and all Pro Soloists, there's no connectors uh, for these wires here that go to the, uh, to the uh, touch sensor bar and to the output jacks. They're soldered in. Uh, so you either need to pull the board and work on it with the, uh, uh, with the stuff still, still connected or you need to, to disconnect this and solder it back in when you, uh, when you reinstall the boards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip these off and I'll, uh, I'll re-solder them into place when I reinstall these boards or this board. There's plenty of slack there that, that I can do that. And then there's some screws to remove, six, five screws, sorry. And 
if you haven't done so already, uh, you're going to need to remove the slider caps. There were just three. And then, uh, then you can lift the board up. And there's a couple connectors. Uh, there's this one here. And this one here. You want to be very gentle with these. So now we've removed the board with the sliders. This is board A. And uh, since I have this board out, um, I'm going to change the capacitors, the tantalum capacitors on it while I have it out. Uh, it will take very little extra effort and will uh, will uh, be good preventative maintenance for this keyboard. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to desolder the tantalum capacitors and desolder the sliders. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get the sliders off. And I've put this piece of uh, bubble wrap down uh, just so uh, I don't damage the, uh, the octave switch. Uh, nothing gets scuffed on the, on the bench. It's not for static protection, this thing. So to get the sliders off, there's uh, some tabs we need to twist, or rather untwist. And then uh, when you twist them back, there's going to be a little nub of metal that you're going to need to cut off with the uh, wire cutters. And uh, if you put your thumb over it, or your, sorry, your index finger over it when you're cutting it, it reduces the chance that the, the little piece will go flying and hit someone in the eye. So with these tabs trimmed up, now I can desolder the sliders. So let's see if we've got these to the point where we can get them out. So I'm going to take the flat nose pliers and I'm going to grip the tab from the bottom of the board and I'm going to push the slider up through the hole. With that, we've got the sliders removed. So, with the old sliders off, now I'm going to remove the tantalum capacitors, and I'm going to do what I did with the power supply, and just trim them off the board as close as possible to make the leads as short as possible. And then I'm going to desolder the, uh, the, the leads.
And by doing this, I minimize the chance of uh, damaging the circuit board. So the capacitors are removed now, and I'm going to do a little cleanup uh, to the board and to the bench. So now we're going to recap this board, um, or replace the, the six capacitors that we took out. And uh, the secret to uh, recapping the, the uh, uh, double-sided arc boards is flux. So I am going to flux the component side of the board so, uh, so the uh, solder can make it through. Um, And, uh, and stick to the pads on the uh, component side of the board. Also because uh, this time I used a rosin core solder, I'm going to, uh, to clean the board in any areas where I, where I soldered here. So now I'm going to install the LED slider kit. 
and uh, this kit which I sell on my website comes pre-assembled so we'll just be dropping it in the place of the old sliders and soldering it into place. So unlike other ARP synthesizers, the Pro Soloist and Pro DGX has, uh, has connections and traces from the sliders on the, the top and bottom of the board. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, verify continuity between the pins of the sliders on the bottom of the board and the traces running off on the top of the board, just to make sure that, uh, that everything is soldered in there correctly. and all the sliders uh, make contact on both sides of the board, so we're good there. So now I'm going to tack solder the uh, power wires to the LED slider kit down to the uh, bottom of the circuit board um, so, uh, so they can be powered and the LEDs will light up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the uh, touch sensor wires back on. And uh, it doesn't matter which order they go in. Um, the S and the T are, are completely interchangeable. They're labeled S and T here on the board. And the other wires will solder once we uh, once we uh, put the board back in. And uh, now we'll solder in the, uh, the other two wires here, G and H, and there's a green wire and a black wire, and G is not green, so that's how you can remember. And the traces are only on this side of the board, so uh, you don't need to worry about getting it, uh, getting it through the other side. And with that, uh, we, we should be done uh, with the LED sliders and recapping board A. So now I'm going to turn this over and we'll fire it up and uh, make sure we didn't break anything. So I flipped this over and now let's uh, fire it up and see where we stand. Um, so there's a voice that was working before, Telstar. Uh, let's try the volume slider. Nice and smooth. Let's try brilliance.
works nicely. Touch sensitivity, so we'll turn on a uh, touch effect like pitch bend. And it bends the pitch more and less. So that seems to be working okay. And let's try the uh, portamento speed. So all sliders are now working uh, properly as they should, and I went with a, uh, a super bright white. Uh, the customer wants the LEDs as bright as possible uh, for touring with. And uh, so the only thing that we have left is the uh, infinitely sustaining notes. So let's switch over to uh, Buzz Bassoon, which was sustaining before. <coughs> And uh, now actually the release is, is working properly on this. So uh, by recapping, I mean, the only thing that we, we did really was we re redid the power supply, recapped the power supply, recapped board A, and changed the sliders. And surprisingly this, uh, this problem with the, the infinite release went away by doing that. one was giving me problems too with the long release so it would appear that we've uh, we've solved that problem so I'm gonna go and calibrate the keyboard and I have a separate video that shows you how to calibrate the R Pro Soloist and Pro DGX but uh, but it looks like uh, we've uh, we fixed this one so um, if you have any questions uh, please post in the comments or contact me through my website synthchaser.com I sell the LED slider kits and I can do them in a variety of different colors on my website. Um, I also have the uh, switches and buttons used in the keyboard, key bushings and uh, capacitor kits for this keyboard. So uh, I have all the parts that you need to keep these, uh, these running great. Uh, again, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day. Bye.